Okay, so now we've got the basics of electric fields nailed down. We're going to have a look at accelerating charged particles in electric fields. Well, there's kind of two sort of sections to this, really. So this first bit we're going to look at is, is from rest, accelerating particles which are at rest initially. And then the second section um, in, in a, the next video We'll look at when accelerating particles which are already moving. So that's like slightly different when they sort of enter an electric field and are kind of accelerated perpendicular to the field. So right now we're going to look at this accelerating particles from rest. Well, the classic particle accelerator, and this will come back to in particle physics quite a lot, but the most basic particle accelerator is really the electron gun. So that's what we're going to look at. Uh, and a really important device. So let's take a look. I mean, an electron's a charged particle, and you could, in theory, use a similar device to accelerate any charged particle. Well, how is it working here? Well, you can see that we've got a little filament here. Well, that is just a heater. And so what we're actually doing is we're heating up the cathode, just with a small voltage, it's usually about six volts or something, and um, so this orange thing that I've drawn is a cathode, which is going to be a piece of metal, which is going to be heated. And the effect of that is going to cause electrons to kind of be liberated from the surface. They're going to gain enough energy to kind of be boiled off the surface. Well, that process actually has a name, which you need to know. And that process is called fermionic emission. Again, we're going to revisit that in particle physics. Well, once the electrons are boiled off the surface, you can see that we've got a potential difference between the cathode and this, which is a kind of anode, which is kind of shaped to just let some of the electrons through. Now, in reality, the situation is quite a lot more sophisticated than this, but you can sort of see in a simple idea, you know, those electrons are going to be attracted towards the anode. And so, in other words, what we're assuming is that this is the positive side of the potential, and this is the negative side. So we've got um, an anode on the right, which is going to attract the electrons, which are initially more or less stationary, straight towards it. Well, a lot of them are going to smash into the anode, but some are going to zoom through the, through the gap. Now, in reality, like I said, it's more sophisticated. There are kind of focusing devices and all sorts. But you can get the idea. You're going to end up with a beam uh, of electrons. You're going to end up with an electron beam. Well, what we can do, so we've therefore accelerated charged particles using an electric field. Well, to find out how fast these particles are going once they've come through, we're just going to use energy. Can you remember in the last section, we reminded ourselves about electrical work done? What's electrical work done? Well, I don't know if you remember my silly way of remembering it. Um, Queen Victoria is or was a woman. So electrical work done is Q times V, the charge times the voltage through which it travels, or the potential difference through which it travels. Well, in this case, we're talking about electrons. And so their charge is E or minus E. The magnitude of their charge is E, where E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And we're moving them for a potential difference of V, big capital V. So we know that the work done on our electrons is going to be E times V. But what's that work doing? Well, it's turning into kinetic energy. It's accelerating the electrons. So we can actually write down a very useful expression. We can say, aha, well, the kinetic energy of the electrons half mv squared, is going to be equal to the electrical work done on them, which is going to be E times V. So E times V is QV electrical work done. And well, that's brilliant, because that means that just by knowing this potential difference, and luckily we know because of the work of physicists um, in many experiments, we know E now and we know M, we know the charge of an electron here, we know the mass of an electron too then we can actually rearrange that and find the velocity straight away. So I, we can actually write, OK, well, that means that the velocity of the electrons, if accelerated through this voltage, is going to be root 2 
e v divided by m. So pretty, pretty great. That is good to call, give a name. Let's call it, or, or the unrearranged version, doesn't matter. That's called unofficially the electron gun equation. Really worth getting your heads around now because it crops up in electric field questions and crops up loads in particle physics questions later. When we come back to it, you'll see. Great, so let's just do a quick example. Um, here we are. So the example says, okay, find the velocity of electrons if the accelerating voltage is 500 volts. Okay, so, well, that's easy. We just go V equals root 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by our accelerating voltage, which we've decided is 500 in this example, divided by the mass of an electron, which you can look up on the data sheet, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And if you chuckle that in your calculator, it comes out as 1.3 times 10 to the seven meters per second. And we've discovered just by knowing the accelerating voltage and, and the bit of data, how fast the electrons will be going after being accelerated. Just one comment, of course, this must all be inside, this whole device, the electron gun, must be inside a vacuum, because otherwise there'd be air particles in the way and the electrons would be bombarding into those all the time. So I didn't mention that at the beginning, but this is all inside a, a, vacuum, a vacuum tube, usually including the beam as well. Great, okay, so one or two questions, and then we're getting on to the second version in the next vid.